Walden II, a utopian science fiction novel penned by B.F. Skinner in 1948, delves into Skinner's belief that human beings lack free will and instead respond predictably to environmental factors. This perspective serves as the foundation for his vision of creating a utopian society by manipulating these factors to control human behaviors. The story unfolds as two young men, Rogers and Steve, pay a visit to Professor Burris in his office. Recently returned war veterans, they seek to discuss the utopian society Burris had once described in a lecture. Burris recalls the lecture and its inspiration from a writer named T. Frazier. To their surprise, Burris learns that Frazier is alive and promises to reach out to him. Frazier responds warmly, inviting all three men to visit the community he has founded and encouraging them to bring along interested individuals. Burris seizes this opportunity and invites his colleague, Augustine Castle. Meanwhile, Rogers and Steve decide to bring their girlfriends, Barbara and Mary. The journey to Frazier's community, named Walden II, involves train and bus travel. Upon arrival, Frazier greets them and guides them through the communal society. He emphasizes that everything within Walden II is shared among its inhabitants, including collectively owned buildings used for various purposes. Inside one such building, they meet Mrs. Meyerson, in charge of clothing production for the community. Frazier presents them with a thoughtful gift, glasses designed to minimize tea spillage. Roger and Steve both notice the remarkable appearance and attire of the women in Walden too. During their tour, the guests bring up the noticeable contrast between the well-dressed women and the men's attire. Frazier explains that the women's exceptional appearance is the result of their having ample free time to focus on their appearance, along with the absence of the fashion tyranny that dictates trends, whether liked or not. Acknowledging the men's less polished appearance, Frazier agrees and mentions that they are still working toward achieving sartorial equality. The impeccable behavior of the children in Walden too catches their attention. Frazier explains that children eat separately from adults until the age of seven. After this age, they undergo a special ceremony and are allowed to join the adults at the dining table. Frazier invites them to witness such a ceremony for a seven-year-old girl named Deborah, who happens to be Mrs. Meyerson's daughter. During dinner, the guests are impressed by the absence of overcrowding in Walden too, despite its large population. Frazier reveals that the community has been thoughtfully designed to discourage overcrowding. They also notice the cafeteria's efficient design, with clever inventions minimizing labor. Surprisingly, all the dishwashing duties can be handled by just two individuals. Frazier explains that everyone in Walden too works in exchange for labor credits, allowing them to choose their jobs. However, they must receive training for specific roles, such as physicians. The less desirable the job, the higher it pays, and everyone is required to work four hours each day, including the guests who will need to work for two hours. The following day, the guests decide to assist with cleaning windows. Their visit to the nursery, where children are raised, evokes anger in Professor Castle. The children are trained to resist temptations and are permitted to transition to the adult quarters when they reach the age of 13. Frazier promotes early sexual exploration, emphasizing that it leads to people having children at a younger age. This, in turn, allows them to have a more liberated approach to sex and the freedom to pursue their desires without the burden of children. As a result, the guests' opinions about Walden too begin to diverge. Barbara and Castle express their disapproval, while Steve and Mary are enthusiastic about the idea of joining. Castle believes that Walden too should share its groundbreaking ideas with the world to improve everyone's lives, while Burris observes that it appears to be a self-contained community. Frazier discloses that other communities based on the same principles exist, and he has no special authority within the community despite being its founder. Castle, however, views Frazier as a tyrant controlling every aspect of the citizens' lives. Burris initially joins the others at the train station to return home, but he has a change of heart and decides to be a part of Walden too. Upon his return, he is warmly welcomed by Steve, who cheerfully informs him that Frazier had predicted his comeback. In an epilogue, Frazier reveals that the book has been published to raise awareness about Walden too. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.